Hey, it's Raleigh from Kamui back with another retrospective. This one is a real doozy. It's from the 2021 Moscone Cup and it features Spanish world champion David Alcaide and Team America's coach Jeremy Jones. Now the story of the 2021 Cup is a strange one. The day before the start of the four-day Moscone Cup, Team America found out Earl Strickland would not be able to compete due to a COVID exposure. And since America didn't have any backup players, their coach Jeremy Jones was forced to step in and play as USA's fifth man. This is a man who probably hadn't shot a ball in days because he was too busy coaching and strategizing and now he's going to play against five absolute assassins from Team Europe. Remember, Europe was a monster favorite to win before the substitution, so after Team America lost Earl, no one really gave USA a shot at the cup. But after day one, America and Europe were tied 2-2. Two to two. And after day two, America had grinded out a narrow 5-4 lead over Team Europe. Look, I was there. There I am, right there, slouching. Terrible posture. But it was like watching a man fight a tiger, and somehow the man was actually winning. Now don't get me wrong, Team America was great at pool, but every member of Team Europe was either a current or recent world champion. As Team America started to pull ahead against all odds, even some of the European fans were starting to root for USA. Of the four days of competition, I can honestly say day two of the 2021 Moscone Cup was one of the greatest days to be a Team America fan. And then came day three, and the underdog revolution was crushed under the heel of reality as Team Europe remembered exactly what they were capable of and steamrolled through the first four matches, taking the lead 8-5, bringing David al to the table in hopes of completing a five-match sweep against the American coach Jeremy Jones. Now, Jeremy hadn't been in any singles matches up to this point and had lost both doubles matches, so everyone expected David to just walk through this match, but Jeremy Jones had other plans. He may not be able to play at David's level, but Jeremy is a brilliant strategist. Instead of walking into a shooting match, Jones played a defensive game against David, and little by little, Jeremy started to put some points on the board. As his stroke loosened up, he even started knocking in some absurd shots like this little three-railer with position. Well, is this going to be one of the best positional shots we've seen? So as the points stacked up, oh, also JJ hit this shot, which probably he meant to go into the side, but whatever, because this is a sick shot. As the points stacked up, the match went to a sudden death final game, with both players tied at four games apiece. And believe me when I tell you, game nine was tense. It lasted 16 minutes, and both players were forced to escape from safety shot after safety shot, and Jeremy was hanging on through sheer force of will and defensive know-how. And just when it looked like David was about to clear the balls and take the decider, his cue ball ran into the seven ball on its way around to the back of the six and left him hooked. He made contact with the six, but finally left Jeremy an open look at a ball with a wide open table that Jones was fully capable of clearing and giving America its much needed point. Jones was under enormous pressure at this moment, and a single miss would certainly be his last, meaning David would win the match, complete the sweep, and go into the final day with a basically insurmountable 9-5 lead in a race to 11. If Jones won, however, America regains momentum, sets up a possible comeback from only being down two games, down 8-6, and secures Jeremy Jones' place among the greatest single match performances in Moscone Cup history. So the pressure was on, which is when mistakes tend to happen. Jeremy was sizing up the shot and saw he was running out of time, so at 12 seconds he calls for the ball to be clean to give himself some extra time to think. Here's the thing though. The rules say the clock does not stop for a ball cleaning. So the referee cleans the ball off at the speed of light, knowing full well this is about to become a huge problem, and puts the ball back with four seconds left on the clock. On this side of the table, to get on a seven. If he plays it clean ball, it's gonna... Fine foul. No, it's fine foul. There's no extension. You ask me to... There's, there's the time. The clock doesn't stop when you ask me to clean it. Now Jeremy heard the warning beeps, assumes they made a mistake, starts to argue, and then receives a time foul. Now, a time foul means an immediate free shot from anywhere for the opponent, and when there are only four balls left on the table, it's basically the kiss of death. So Jeremy Jones tries to fight the decision. Unfortunately, this is just one of those situations where you don't really have a leg to stand on. The rules clearly state the clock does not stop during a routine cue ball cleaning. If they did, you could just ask for a cue ball cleaning between every single shot and get like 40 timeouts. In some rare cases, like a fly landing on the cue ball or your cue catching fire, a thing that really did happen to Alex Pagulian, shout out Alex Pagulian, cool dude. Oh, stop the clock, please. Now, a member of the audience said that a player's cue was on fire. Oh, no. <laughs> on fire, Alex Pagulian. For routine cue ball cleanings, however, the clock does not stop. 
Jeremy Jones knows this, he just momentarily forgot due to the pressure. The other possible issue is that referee Marcel went ahead and cleaned the cue ball knowing full well it was gonna become an issue. Maybe he should have told Jeremy the clock didn't stop. But again, the referee isn't really supposed to help either player, especially considering two days earlier when basically this exact same situation came up in a sudden death game on day one where Albin Ocean and Eklund Kachi forgot whose turn it was and the same referee let Kachi square up and hit the ball before calling a foul. With the beach going off. The Ooh. wrong play of play turn was his turn. Wow, what a turn of events. Yep, was his turn. The Europeans have played out turn. Ball and end. Start the clock, please. Which gave Team America ball in hand and allowed them to win that match. The Moscone Cup causes the brain to freeze. So all in all, it was an unsatisfying conclusion to an otherwise spectacular match. And I don't think anyone wanted to see the game end that way. And this includes David al Qaeda or Team Europe. al Qaeda basically apologizes for having to take ball in hand and all of Team Europe come over to console Jeremy at the end of the game. There is one word for this situation, unfortunate. For me personally, I got so wrapped up in the story of the comeback that I didn't realize that real life is sometimes random and chaotic and unsatisfying. So an otherwise incredible match ends on a sour note, and there I am right there feeling sorry for myself and Team USA. Not that I'm connected or anything, I was just really rooting for them. But maybe that's why sports are so fun to watch. They don't have a predictable ending. They don't end like a movie or a story that you've seen before. Also, they don't really end. I mean, there's gonna be a Moscone Cup next year, and the year after that, and the year after that, and they'll all have their own stories, and I, I just can't wait to see them all. You know, this is a disappointing finish, but it's just one Moscone Cup in the history of Moscone Cups, and for every unfortunate moment, there's some insane performance that completely makes up for it. Even when it's a tragedy, pool is fun. Also, there was this totally badass Jeremy Jones shot in that match. Oh, what a shot. Okay, thanks so much for listening. I'm Raleigh Williams. If you have an idea for a shot to do a retrospective on, let me know, and I will see you next time.